In this video, we're discussing what do industrial engineers do, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we inspire engineers to rise to the top 1% of their engineering career. And if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. Check out the description below for access to our free sponsored things. Sign up along with the Discord server with 800 engineers, the 1% Engineer Kit, and the IG page. What type of engineer do you want to be? What's your biggest problem? What video should we make next? Comment below. All right, let's jump right into what is industrial engineering anyway. Industrial engineering is an engineering profession that is concerned with the optimization of complex processes, systems, or organizations by developing, improving, and implementing integrated systems of people, money, knowledge, information, equipment, energy, and materials. Okay, let's talk about the history. There is a general consensus among historians that the roots of the industrial engineering profession dates back to the Industrial Revolution. Wouldn't that make sense? The technologies that helped mechanize traditional manual operations in the textile industry include the flying shuttle, the spinning jenny, along with the fact that the steam engine generated economies of scale that made mass production in centralized locations attractive for the first time ever. Innovation within industrial engineering includes the specialization of labor so a worker only did one task and they could be much better and faster and safer within that task along with interchangeable parts. Eli Whitney and Simone North provided the feasibility of the notion of interchangeable parts in the manufacture of muskets and pistols for the US government. Before Whitney people would just make their own guns and all the parts, the hammers, the triggers, the bullets, everything was different so there was no way to mass produce or efficiently generate more and more weapons. Under the interchangeable parts system parts were mass produced to tolerances to enable their use in any finished product. The result was a significant reduction in the need for skill from specialized workers, which eventually led to the industrial environment to be studied later. All right, with that history being covered, let's talk about the tasks that industrial engineers may participate in. Along the way, industrial engineers were able to create new systems, processes, or situations for the use of coordination of labor, materials, and machines to improve the quality and productivity of systems, physical or social. Depending on the subspecialties involved, Industrial engineering may also overlap with operations research, systems engineering, manufacturing engineering, production engineering, supply chain engineering, management science, management engineering, financial engineering, ergonomics or human factors engineering, I have a lot to say about that, safety engineering, logistics engineering, and even more can be included depending on the perspective of the user. Traditionally, a major aspect of industrial engineering was planning the layouts of factories and designing assembly lines and other manufacturing paradigms. And now, in lean manufacturing systems, industrial engineers work to eliminate waste of time, money, materials, energy, and other resources. Examples of where industrial Industrial engineering might be useful include flow process charting, process mapping, designing an assembly workstation, strategizing for various operational logistics, consulting as an efficiency expert, developing a new financial algorithm or loan system for a bank, streamlining operation and emergency room locations or usage within a hospital, planning complex distribution schemes for materials or products, this is also considered supply chain management, and shortening lines or queues at a bank, hospital, or theme park. Modern industrial engineers typically use predetermined motion time system, computer simulation, along with extensive mathematical tools for modeling, such as mathematical optimization and queuing theory, and computational methods for systems analysis, evaluation, and optimization. I really think we should go over the differences between industrial engineering because even though it is technically one of the big four, five fields within engineering, you only have three, civil, electrical, and mechanical, that hire over 300,000 engineers in America, but industrial engineering is right behind it with 285,000 people working in that field. There's so many people working in software, so technically it's like in the big four, big five. But industrial engineering is there, however, it is considerably different from the other engineerings, and let's talk about why. Engineering in general is traditionally decompositional. To understand the whole of something, it is first broken down into its parts. Once you master the parts, then you put them back together to create a better understanding of how to master the whole. The approach of industrial engineering is the opposite. Any one part cannot be
be understood without the context of the entire system. Changes in one part of the system affect the whole system, and the role of the single part is to better serve this greater umbrella system. Also, industrial engineering considers the human factor and its relation to the technical aspect of the situation and all of the other factors that influence the entire system, while other engineering disciplines focus on the design of inanimate objects. Industrial engineers integrate combinations of people, information, materials, and equipment that produce innovative and efficient organizations. In addition to manufacturing, industrial engineers work and consult in every industry, including hospitals, communications, e-commerce, entertainment, government, finance, food, pharmaceuticals, semiconductors, sports, insurance, sales, accounting, banking, travel, and transportation. Industrial engineering is the branch of engineering most closely related to human resources in that they apply social skills to work with all types of employees, from engineers to salespeople to top management. One of the main focuses of an industrial engineer is to improve the working environments of people, not to change the worker, but to change the workplace. All engineers, including industrial engineers, take mathematics through calculus and differential equations. Industrial engineering is different in that it's based on discrete variable math, whereas all other engineering is based on continuous variable math. Industrial engineers emphasize the use of linear algebra and differential equations, as opposed to the use of differential equations, which are so prevalent in other engineering disciplines. The emphasis becomes clear in optimization of production systems in which we are sequencing orders, scheduling batches, and determining the number of materials. Again, the big three, you have civil, mechanical, and electrical engineering. There's 151 civil engineering programs in America, 179 mechanical, and 185 electrical. And there's 94 industrial engineering programs. There wasn't one at my alma mater, but I'm not surprised it's just behind the big three because again, guys, we know it's the big four, big five engineering within itself. I also do have to say that there is this stigma around industrial engineering that they're not as smart, they don't get paid as well. But as you can see with this salary database, there are some platforms that report it as nearly identical to some of the salaries of civil and mechanical and a few of them have it a little bit less but I really do again think that we're splitting hairs when you talk about which engineering field makes the most money because they all do far more than average so if industrial engineering is something that you like if you like optimizing an entire system instead of actually doing design or tweaking and tweaking and tweaking an individual thing then certainly industrial engineering is for you when I went to grad school I studied traffic engineering traffic engineering requires so much human input that we actually took industrial engineering courses and we worked with driving simulators and we had to figure out how humans would interact with red light, green light, yellow light, and stop signs and when the workload is high and people are confused and drowsy and distracted, how are they going to perform, how are they going to operate? And we as engineers within this traffic ecosystem had to optimize things for the performance of that human. Now what we're doing is taking the human out of it because again, machine and robots will always outperform humans. So the human factors element is decreasing within traffic engineering, but for eons, it has been very significant. So I just wanted to include that personal note about human factors engineering. I know I need to make more videos about traffic, ITS, transportation engineering, and things like this. Let me know if you want those in the comments below. Since industrial engineers don't really participate in design, they do a whole systems optimization approach. It's not necessarily vital that you get your PE, but again, if you want to be in management and you want to be a division, leader, you want to make more money, then it certainly isn't bad to go ahead and stand out, show your ambition, and differentiate yourself from other engineers in the office. So if you want to be a 1% engineer, I still think that you should go in and get your PE. Even if you're in software or chemical engineering and almost nobody gets it, why shouldn't you just go ahead and do it anyways? The work environment for industrial engineering can vary so much. You can work in typical manufacturing or you can even work for a massive industry like theme parks, Disneyland, and Six Flags, and things like this. Most companies release a service or a product where it goes out to people and therefore there's an optimization element in almost all fields where you want to save time, energy, and resources. And this is why 285,000 industrial engineers are hired in America alone because they can work in so many industries. Who wants to be an industrial engineer? What would be your dream job within the sector? Let us know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. We release videos on empowering young engineers to help them rise to the top 1% of their career. So if you don't want to miss any more videos, and that should be you, then make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. Check out the description below for access to the Discord server 800 engineers along with the 1% engineer kit, the Discord page, and our sponsor Thanks. You can go sign up for a free account there and get your portfolio started. Thanks again guys for watching the 1% engineer show and we'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.